Hello everyone, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO playing as the Far Eastern Soviet Republic. Last time, we got to 1969, and we have decisions in which we can take to begin the Second Siberian War. A couple comments still include, actually two comments, for me to play as the Aryan Brotherhood someday. And both comments, though, were different with who they wanted me to choose. They wanted me to choose Hyperborea, or some guy named Wagner, so I'll get there eventually. Um... At the time of this recording, TNO doesn't have an extreme amount of content for Russia. Uh, I mean, obviously, we can reunify it, but after that, there's not really much. So, I will play as the Brotherhood someday. Just not yet. Yeah. Just give it time. Just because there's so many countries to play as. I want to play. I want to spend actually a lot of time with the Russian states. But I still need to play as another Germany, Iberian Union. I got to play Italy once everything is perfect about them. Go back to England someday and play as a resistance. Play as Japan. Play as China. United States definitely. So much to do. So much to do in this mod. But let's do the Second Siberian War before we get into another comment. Western fortification, that's okay. We I want 100% preparedness, so land fortune, not, not bad. Army XP goes up and recon company? Uh, yes, please. Five more off-map military factories would not be bad, but let's not do that. Infrastructure? Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see, they get less war support, we get political power? Yes, please. And we get more manpower, why not? So, we have to wait now. Uh... I guess exactly not exactly, but we have cold days. Unfortunately, going by the recent actions, it has seemed that all hopes to of peace with the Central Siberian Federation have been dashed in an announcement from Novosibirsk. The Central Siberian state has claimed that we are, we are an illegitimate, illegitimate state that stands in the way on their path to reunify all of Russia. Following this declaration of hostility, they've expelled all of our citizens within their borders. As the military starts to mobilize and clouds circle the horizon, it seems that our conflict of interests shall be settled on the battlefield rather than at the negotiating table. How worrying. We lose stability for more war support. It is what it is. Who cares? A grand showdown. The Far Eastern Soviet Republic has overcome its obstacles and conquered all other nations in the way, in its way, either through peaceful unification or forceful war. Now it stands at a precipice. The vast territories of Russia are expansive. While the Far Eastern Soviet Republic close, controls a significant portion of it, there's still much more to conquer. We must begin our preparing for a war that will challenge our military units, unlike all the other wars that have come before us, and they shall fall. Enemies shall fall. Let us see who will stand tall in the end. And I don't want to do that. I, as soon as I started this game back up, look at that. Look at that. A deficit, finally, finally, yes, yes, and we have 10.10 .10 GDP, awesome, I have no idea what happened, but I'll gladly accept it, so right now we got plenty of guns, plenty of anti-tank, we need more anti-air and tank divisions, which we're working on, uh, yeah, our divisions overall, looking pretty good, and we'd have no light infantry currently, which is awesome, 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 now let's get some more forts in Irkutsk, because we can, because why not, uh, so that was another comment from yesterday saying, if you want to decrease your budget, stop producing with your military factories. That's that's absolutely one way to do it, to have less of a deficit, but I don't really want to do that right now. I mean, I, I will want to lower the amount of factories we're making or using, but right now, I think we're at a pretty good level. Yeah, we don't have everything we want, but we'll get some more factories once we take out these guys, the Central Siberian Federation, in which we'll have Siberia completely unified, which would be great. So, we just got to give it a little bit more time. We need more planes, but we're doing, actually, we're doing really well, so I'm not really too concerned about it just yet. Uh, obviously, we can develop, oh, we can hire foreign instructors. Oh, yeah, definitely do that, because I want to make sure our army is the best in the world. We can do the Social International, which we can invent more in our a collective defense fund, but we can wait on that just a little bit. Let's get some better jet fighters. Let's make sure that jet fighters are the best thing we have, so if enemies have air support, they can't really hurt us, and that'll be a good thing. Let's see, we're making some more refineries, which is good. We're getting a few more civilian factors, and we're producing very nicely. Let's see over here. 90, minus 90 million. It's not much, but I'll gladly take it. It really seems like we need six. The more factors are put on things that need uh, rubber, the one more rubber I make. I could grab some, but minus three is not that bad. Second inauguration of Bennett. Not bad. And I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm as we are preparing for the invasion. Let's see. We have how many? We have one, two, three, four, five. That's 20... 30%, 50%, 60%, 75 percent. Uh let's go with that one. We could do this one as well, but I don't really need those extra five military factories. How many factories does Central Siberian Federation even have? They have minus thirty-nine percent stability. That is that's interesting. I mean they are they had to have opioid epidemic, but they have a lot of manpower and a lot of factories, not bad. Twenty-nine civilians and eighteen military? That's gonna look really great for us. And they have such a tiny military. Now, our divisions probably aren't the best in the world. But they're pretty darn good. 20 combat width. 
Uh, actually, yeah, I still need to get more stuff here, which we're working on. But how much support coming do we have? We got enough. Military officer is done, slashed. You know what? I want more deficits. There you go. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that right before we go to war, but that's okay. Now, I probably should not cut down on the debt, so I'm not going to. Minimum annual debt payment interest, 0.68. But I'm just going to try to do the best I can with the GDP. It wasn't very much. Maybe I should really cut out, cut out the debt instead. But just doing stuff for the GDP is just so good. It's 68. Let's get the advanced infantry rifle for the AKN. Yes, I love the AK series of weapons. Such a good series of weapons. So good, so good. I love it so much. Improved worker training. Absolutely. Moderately increases GDP. Yes. 15.85. We'll keep that number in mind. Our debt is roughly 9 billion. But as we have a deficit, a good deficit, I'm not too concerned about it. Let's see anything over here. Convert industrial centers. Oh, it must be this thing. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't want any more debt. Siberian reunification. I can't wait, man. This is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How is Europe doing? Western Russian re Free Republic. Oh, um, you know what? I did say this, that I'd check out Germany. I forgot to check out Germany, why they're stopping. But I'll check on them in just a little bit, just to see what's going on here, because they're not doing anything. They have stability. They must have a lot of debt, I assume. A lot of divisions. They have some manpower. They got plenty of factories, plenty of fuel. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's up with them. I, I apologize about that. I thought I would... I said I would check them out, but I'll check them out in just a little bit. Uh, let's see. Sock Inter... Ah, yes! Yeah, Sock Inter International Associates. Yes, yes. Does anyone else like us? Anyone else in the world? Ooh, the flank of Spain, S Spanish are doing very, very well. No, it's only us in Vietnam. Hmm. 0.97, not bad. Anything else over here? No, not yet. Yeah, uh, who are you led by? Jamie... Milans del Bosch. Huh. Okay, cool. He joined the Infantry Academy in 34. Oh. Okay, well, cool. Let's see. He wanted. He liked the favoring the German war machine. Uh, let's see. That's not bad. Keep spending, though, for now. If I did this... That actually did something compared to what we did. Ah, it's 6.03. I know it's just better overall to invest in uh, your GDP, but sometimes, man, sometimes. Logistics 1, nice. That's good. Uh, anything else down here? Scientific research, education, yes. Absolutely yes. Since we're going to go to war next, we've got logistic companies. Field hospitals, hospitals would not be bad. Maybe get some signal companies. Let's try that. Let's put that under infantry. Let's do that. Get some logistic companies. It loads our armor, but supply is just so bad for those guys. Here, supply is not bad, but we'll probably throw on logistics here as well, just because... Um, actually, can I support that? Do we have enough? Yeah, we do have enough. We do have enough. I'm going to do that anyways for now, because I want to see if I can make these, 40, these guys 40 combat with. Because I want to do that. I probably want to do that. Make them real big and strong, so no one can smack us down. All right, so we need 25 command power, which we have. We just got to wait for these to get finished, and then we can go to war. Which is a great thing. Great, great, great thing. That looks so far away with that river there. Oh, my goodness. Uh, You can train maybe just for a little bit. That's fine. It's just it's just a minor amount, like less than 10%. T less than 10%. I want to make sure that they're all regulars, which would be great. Taking a little bit of attrition because of exercise. That's fine. 16.16. .16, nice. Uh, that's not bad. Oh, wow, over 9 billion now? Hmm. I don't know, man. As long as we keep doing these decisions, and we keep getting the options to improve our abilities, that'd be great with us. Looks like Phalangus Spain, uh, Phalangus Spain, has won the war. Very interesting. Look at that. 16.16, .16, not bad. Greece is looking okay, looking a little sad. Portugal is still falling apart. Kingdom of Morocco is probably getting invaded by the Riff, Repu Riff Republic. Huh. Oh man, look at that hair. Mohammed Chukuri. Uh, there's no... Oh, oh, there's no focus for Phalangus Spain. Ah, oh, why? Why? Well, I guess I know at the time of this recording, if I play Iberia, don't go Phalangus Spain. 
0.47. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Only 9 million. Cut down the debt. Because at least we can cut the debt down. If I invest in the GDP, only half of the money I have for liquid reserves goes into it. So, uh, that's a big sadness. Quite a big sadness. Oh, begin the invasion. And see, these guys are done training anyways. Three. I'm not even going to count down. Just put both of you guys right here. That's fine with me. Bop, bop, bop. I could have trained these guys, but whatever. Let's have a good time. It's time to end these people. War on the horizon. The troops of the Central Siberian Federation are beginning to amass on our borders. Whether fortified bunkers and military operations at display, their intentions are clear. War will face our nation, and we must mobilize our troops quickly if we don't wish to be overwhelmed at the front. The front, the forces shall test our mettle. We wish you to know better. Their will shall break first. Our nation will triumph in the lands of Russia. Winner takes all. In which we now have less than a month until we can go kaboom with the enemy and encourage agricultural mechanization. And last time we discovered, or we actually became, some of the world leaders in innovative industry, which was awesome, awesome, awesome. But, look at all this. Uh, let's see, five a month, 4.7. Uh, it's getting close for research facilities. Uh, it's kind of slow in agricultural stuff for now, but that's fine, But because we already have an upgrade once. Mass mechanizations, but modern agriculture would be great. We're, we're looking up, man. 3.5, that's okay. We fixed that last time. The Ural military district declared war in the Western Russian Free Republic. Oh, so they're killing each other, and then we're killing each other. This might be the final episode, then. Not bad. That's really good for industrial equipment. Rudimentary fa manufacturing. Please go further, further, further. Innovative industry. Improving by 5.43 a month. Well, I'm not sure we can get any better than innovative industry. And then for widespread cronyism. Oh, look at that. Going up by 9 a month. Jesus. Widespread cronyism. Become political interference. More attack, more defense. Just great stuff overall. Happy June 1st, though. Happy June 1st. Invest in construction. Just go ahead. Gives us more spending. Or ability to construct stuff, we should say. As well as... Even though it hurts our debt. Barely. U.S. Japanese talks begin. Can the Pacific live up to its name? So be it. Uh, but it also gives us more construction speed and... Oh, yay. Good. More GDP. I couldn't think of the word. You know what? Screw that. We're making a nuclear reactor as well. Only minus two now. Great. Um, go ahead and move on in, guys. If you can. Ooh, that debt, point nine point two eight. Oh boy, that is not looking ideal, man. We can, actually now, since we did that, we can, point two seven. not bad. Uh, you know what? We have a little bit of a debt right now. Hmm. Yeah, even if we're at war. Oh, wow. The deficit actually went up even further. Wow, okay. It was at 100 some million. Now it's at 621 some million. Uh, even with that, I, I assume that we could probably do pretty well. Let's look at this motorized division. It is like maybe 20 combat width. We beat the snot out of it already. So, Oh my god, look at that GDP. 29? How did I get 29 billion? Wait, we were just at 1616 or something like that, right? I mean, yeah, our debt's even bigger now. But, oh, there goes Yemen. Civil war in Yemen, that's pretty normal. Holy crap, well, we spent a lot on our civilian spending. I mean, but Jesus Christ, that's awesome. Encourage returning these people? Yeah, slightly increase the GDP, get more stability, that'd be great. Uh, have we won yet? I don't think they can really stand up to us, which is great. Okay, guys. Are you moving at all? I mean, I love the GDP, guys, but... Let's get a move on. Everyone moving in. Ah, oh, there's two divisions there. And there's a division right there, too. Huh. A little bit of lag, you know, whatever. You guys, go... Go that way. Just take all this stuff out. There you go. Something like that. I don't know. And then you guys... Ah, oh, they got some IFVs. And we can't quite pierce them. So we should probably put anti-tank on our guys if we sh uh, We really should, probably. Actually, since you're doing that, you're going to come right here. And you're going to circle that division. Completely just encircle them, destroy them. Makes sense, I suppose. Insurrection in Oman, not another one. Oh, yes, yes. Most definitely another one. Dafar? Oh, Dafar is exploding. We could withdraw from the collective fund, but I mean, we, we put money in there. Vietnam, I don't think, put anything in there at all. Which is fine with us. We put it there for a reason. Good, their organization is getting lower, even though our strength in organization is also getting lower. Good, we cut them off. Help them out. Improved fighters? Great. Get some better. Plus air support. Oh, that's good. That's for more, more range. Russia's a big country, so. Drop tanks. Thank you. Good. That manpower's looking not too bad. De debt is not looking great, but whatever. Go there, take the capital. Or not the capital, just the city. 
good. Uh, if you want to, you can help, help out here. You try to help out. See what happens. How many men have we lost? We lost 5,000. I lost 9,000. Ah, the railway junction has been captured. <clears throat> Crashing through the forested mountains surrounding our city. Our men have overrun the city of Krasnoyarsk. And with it, we have taken the widely discussed Krasnoyarsk Railway Junction. The tall and mighty st station building stretched across the urban space and dominated our soldiers' view. It was a logistical fortress stuffed with bulky metal trains resting on the platforms. With the crucial junction of the Trans-Siberian Railway now under our control, we can now more vastly improve our logistical abilities in performing the Herculean, Herculean task of reuniting Russia. Piling heaps of ammunition crates and uh, supply crates under the trains, we can deliver these resources to the front lines more, far more effectively, as well as increase the speed in which communication can be delivered. <clears throat> Our grasp over the KRJ will stretch our influence over and across Siberia and is a step towards extending our power to reunite Russia under our watch. More division speed, less supply consumption, and plus 15% construction speed. God dang. Look at that GDP. 36, 50 billion. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. 50 billion. Wow. That's insane. Holy smokerinos. And the basin's been captured. A man spill over the ruins of the Kuznetsk. Basin and battling through the remains of the enemy fortifications on pockets of wounded squadrons with gunfire so cracking or crackling in the distance, the embers of burning structures clawed at the sky with roaring flames. Wind rushed through the Kuznetsk depression, carrying it with the blackened stench of the coal reserves now under our control. With such rich natural resources now under our administration, we have access to generate immense amounts of energy. The power produced by excavated coal reserves can primarily increase our manufacturing capabilities as well as provide energy to the many citizens living within our territory. A highly valuable and sought-after location in central Siberia, the prized asset under our jurisdiction must be put to use soon, so we may reap the benefits of coal mines before any of our enemies manage to snatch it from us ourselves. We have won a great victory. We get more resource efficiency gain and less consumer goods factories. I'm going to say that's then I'm going to be done with doing civilian spending. I think we're okay for now. And did we actually destroy that division? I think we did. We might have. Maybe not. But we might have. How many divisions do they have? It's up to six now. Okay. And we got the aircraft plant. The fears of fall of Novosibirsk and the retreat of the enemy forces across the frontiers of the battlefield have left us in control of the now idle Novosibirsk aircraft plant. Towering and dormant, the factory was constructed before the Great Patriotic War and has manufactured vehicles capable of flight for administrative or administrators ever since. Now that the plant is under our control, we will soon have access to a fresh arsenal of aircraft fit for any purpose of our armies. Motor engines soar and squadrons of planes may fill the Siberian skies bearing our insignia to first dominate the plans and plains and wastes of central Siberia by land. We must stay in the wild airs of our broken Russia. With this plant, the future may be ours for centuries to come. Look at that production cost. The production gets better. So good. Are they going to capitulate now or something or what? Barnall. Take all major cities. And even take some of the minor cities too. Nice. We're struggling here and there, but that's okay. Lost 8,000 for 14,000. They should capitulate relatively soon. If keep, just keep taking just a few more cities. And you guys... Oh, the Ural Military District is winning. Interesting. Now, after this, I'll probably try to invade uh, Kazakhstan. That'd probably be for the best. Over here, to, get to Yorga. That'd be nice. Can you actually beat these guys up? Is that a river we're fighting over? God dang it, it is. You still might actually be able to win, though. But it doesn't matter. We won the war. 59 billion, my friends. Let's go ahead and just instantly core all this stuff. This is why I saved political power up. And Siberian reunification gets stability, naval XP, and will be known as the Siberian Socialist Republic. And that is beautiful, my friends. And now we have a focus stream, my friends, as well. Into the Atomic Age, or the dreams of a better world. We were but a few dreamers, declaring our dream through a remote antenna near the eastern shore of Lake Baikal. We thought nobody would hear us, but uh, that they would share our dream, but they did. We were a warlord state on the most forgotten coast in the world. No one thought we could take over the much stronger and populous areas of central Siberia. Not, certainly not without compromising our ideals, but we did. Now we have a massive chunk of the old Union under our control. We prepare now to solidify our rule and take the rest of the climactic battle for Russia. And nobody, not even ourselves, is willing to doubt our dream now. More political power, and we get an event. I like reading these events. Exert influence in Kazakhstan. We must be ready and go to war with Kazakhstan almost instantaneously. We must. Must, 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 must. Because I just want to invade. Take them out. Let's see. Invest. Nah. We can invest later on. So our debt. Let's see. Seven billion. Civilian spending is super high. Uh, we could probably lower this by a little bit first. Let's do that. It's not even military spending. Civilian spending. Jesus Christ. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, uh, look at that GDP. 106%. An end to wonders. We have come far. 
Where once the government has seen as a mere has been seen as a mere warlord, holding onto a scrap of Russian land, we can now assert ourselves as a proper nation on the world stage. Having made it into the final basket of candidates to reunify Russia, our can country can stand proud of its accomplishments and looks to the road ahead with determination. <clears throat> This progress has filled our citizens with awe, even as we rebuild the country, its infrastructures, and its industries. However, our successes have rendered the wonders of the old much less critical to our efforts. Where once holding to these, onto these relics of a happier past gave our government legitimacy and gave our people tools needed for survival, the wonders under our control are now a tiny portion of our overall assets. They'll no doubt continue to inspire our people, and they stand as mementos to the warlord era. But the age we are holding onto wonders was of great importance, which has unfortunately come to an end. So be it. Ten billion. Hmm. Nice. Very nice. Uh, let's see. It's not. We can't quite do this stuff yet. Actually, we could do some resource efficiency gain and get another thing over there. No, get level two. We can do that, which might not be bad. Let's get the resource extraction then. All right. So construction help our deficit a little bit more. I really don't like how much we're spending on civilian stuff, but that's okay. Public health care trinket. Hmm. We could slash civilian spending if we really wanted to. That does lower by two billion, so that's not bad. I just want to make sure that we have enough strength to do whatever we need. Uh, how Kazakhstan? How strong are you guys? Six to eight divisions. It's not bad. How we get some big boys? We probably don't have the means to do this yet, but that's okay. Artillery. Uh, they require a little bit more supplies. Piercing, it doesn't really help. Just go with the train intrude. The tried and true infantry. There you go. You guys, I'm going to put you there. And I'm going to convert all you guys to big boys. There you go. Let's begin exerting influence in Kazakhstan. That'd be good. And military intervention. So, the dreams of a better world. Selvin finished signaling, signing the forms, officially establishing the existence of the Novosoberesk Workers' Council. That was the last of many tasks he needed to complete that long night, and at last he could go home and rest. As he puts on his coat and left his office, he was stopped by the members of the Central Committee. Come, Valerie Braun said, we have a surprise for you. Selvin blinked as he followed the committee members into a conference room, his eyes widening at what he saw on the wall. A complete map of the Siberian Socialist Republic, from Kamch... Chatka in the east to the Gulf of Ob in the west. He collapsed on a chair, his breaths fast and shallow. So many people, so many families, all counting on him to ensure that they are safe and free. So many people choose whose lives could be destroyed within a single stroke of the pen. Did he fail them that evening? What if his decision made their lives worse than before he came to rule them? He began to shake, cursing himself under his breath, and when a hand extended to itself, he looked up and saw Mahib. Don't worry, comrade, we got your back, Mahib said, Salvin taking his hands and getting up. In time to trouble, you always had us to depend on. Olanoskaya said, giving Selvin a smile. Always try and remember that, comrade. We're all in this together, said Pachuro. Look, Valerie, if you're still worried, I've still got some brandy in my cabinet, said Braun, putting, patting him on the back. Thank you, comrade, but I don't think I need it, laughed Selvin, as the committee left the room together. Solidarity forever. Forever and ever. All right, so you guys are looking pretty weak now. That's okay. Uh, echoes of the Siberian plan. Oh, we get Siberian plan. Nice. Uh, let's get that one so we can get that one done more quickly. All power to the worker. <clears throat> Of course, the workers should be able to organize. What true socialist would not would be able to deny this? If something's wrong, the workers should get together with the comrades in the field and demand redress. If management refuses to change, then they can take action. Workers everywhere should be able to do it, and we've kept our workers from doing it for far too long. Starting now, anyone who wants to unionize their workplace and to a trade union can. No restrictions, no retaliation, and no repression. It, if it isn't one of those disgusting fascist unions, then they can do it. It will be their right, but they know it is their, also their duty if we are to have workplace democracy. Cool. Now we got a couple more military factories, which gonna hurt us, but whatever. Um, get some more of this. And let's go ahead and improve. Ooh, we have enough bombers. Let's do that as well. I want to make sure we have enough planes for now, and then focus on tanks. Let's create a way for one more rubber. For at least a rubber, I guess. Not bad. Construction spending, we're gonna lower that by two a little bit, too. That's fine with me. Because now we should have two lines, at least. We got more than we almost have four that's actually not too bad i don't mind doing that then uh <clears throat> military intervention i want to give these guys just a little bit more time to get a little bit more strength first since i did hit them pretty hard with uh <laughs> making them pretty thick so oh we might have to move quickly though oh crap yeah let's we, we can't wait now we gotta move quickly since they have now the russian people's union let's go ahead we go to war with them we have to do it i don't want to influence them i just want to just get rid of them Regional integration. 
Uh, yeah, we already did that, so that looks pretty good. Dreams of dreams of freedom. Well, we did that quite a while ago. That's fine. Construction. Mm, we can do it just just a little bit more. There you go. One point six six is not bad. Really not bad at all. Our GDP is ten percent. Our growth is ten percent. So, and we still get one two. We still get more than three, which is awesome. We're building up some nuclear reactor stuff. All power to the worker. Great. Outputting democracy. Liberation, not annihilation. Support disenfranchisement. Freedom under socialism. More stability. Uh, authoritarian socialism, huh? Unity and diversity. Embracing new comrades. Slightly decreased coring time. Uplifting the proletariat. That looks like it's pretty costly, but that's not too bad. Opening hand. Increase their GDP growth. Oh, slightly. Mm, I'm tempted. Echoes of the Siberian plan. The Siberian plan was Bukharin's major project. To turn the waste of Central Siberia into a thriving hub of industry, one that would propel the Soviet Union into the modern age. Now we may have plenty of re well reasoned objections to the way the plan was carried out, but we do have to admit the idea of Siberia based industrial powerhouse is tempting, especially considering your current position. The infrastructure laid down so long ago will be the basis of the new Siberian plan, one that fits the needs of the working class, and not lofty dreams and quotas. One built not on the backs of political prisoners and the gulag system, but with one of full support of the working class. There's a foundation here, and we can build whatever we need on top of it. Death of Ho Chi Minh. Well, that communist is gone. But it's, he was a very interesting guy, guy, to say the least. If that's the case, we can keep doing that. Uh, I think we have enough factories still for now. Look at all this infrastructure we got to build up. Uh, we could build it there. You know, instead of a civilian factory, get a synthetic refinery. There you go. All these places are going to need infrastructure. Oh man, I like that this is huge, so we don't just spend a lot of different, a lot of time building up all this extra other stuff. Tanu Tuba, love it. Tanu what? Tanu what? Very good. Look at that, that's beautiful. Signal Company's great. Hey, another division. Now it's just one of our old normal divisions, but that's okay. Did we actually lose a division last time? We might have, huh? Well, that's not good. Uh, let's see. Better recon for our recon stuff. That probably would be pretty good to do. Let's get better logistic companies first, since we are going to use them immediately anyways. Signal companies would be nice. Do we have enough? Yes, we definitely do. Good. Get them some... Oh, we don't have enough army XP. That sucks. Cool. Embracing new comrades. <clears throat> Central Siberia is not like the East. There's a lot less coastline for one thing. There's some more industry here as well. But the main difference is that there are a lot more people here. A diverse group of people who hold many ideologies from socialism to bourgeois democracy to whatever the hell rhetoric was up to. These people will be integrated into our political system by introducing them to our civic duties of a socialist and espousing the benefits of our system. They will come to realize that we have the way of the future. Winning the support of the population will give us a larger work number of workers to fight for our side. Slightly decreased coring times. Not bad. Not bad. <clears throat> hmm. I could cut it by 5% more. Ah, uh, go ahead and do that. Now it's only 1.1. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I really want to keep that growth, or keep that debt in check. 1, 2, and so 3. Great. That's what I wanted. That's really actually what I wanted in the end. Ah, uh, authoritarian democracy. Authoritarian tyrants, I see. Squ quality small arms. Uh, oh, better army professionalism. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Just in time for us to go to war with Kazakhstan. So those two words seem to be the ultimate lesson in the history of military theory. It is not the quality of guns and weaponry that make an army, but discipline. Those men that hold until the death because of command will be the ones to claim a victory. <clears throat> in a world of absolute war, of very new weaponry, it seems we often forget that the simple fact. An army cannot function without those two words, luckily. Anti-corruption programs in the army and new boot camps have brought our army one step closer to the ultimate goal of Spar Spartanic valor. No longer will a man defeat... <clears throat> Defect or serve political masters. They will serve the generals and nothing less. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. As we are poised to go to war and have a good time. Well, the best time that we possibly can while going to war. Getting more fuel, which is nice. We're doing much better on anti air now. Doing better on main battle tanks. Embracing our new comrades. You bet we are. And drop tanks. Let's get an open hand, though. <clears throat> One must not forget that what we are doing here. Our goal is not to crush the people of Siberia beneath the treads of the revolution, but to uplift them into a new and brighter future. We are doing this for them, and if they don't recognize it at first, then we will show them through our actions. Let us go forth, holding ourselves to the highest of standards. We will unite Russia through kindness, and not simply purge those that disagree. We are doing this for the greatest cause the human race has known, and we must never forget that we are to behave as such. Good, good, good. Yeah, we're looking really good on a lot of things here. Holy cow. Transport helicopters, that's cool and all, but we don't need that. And there goes Egypt. <clears throat> Black and red reunited. <clears throat> so the council buildings of Kansk lay silent. They had once been filled with dozens of bickering voices with little agreement. Let's save it for a, a unanimous and complete rejection of authority. A gold blast of Siberian hair 
Air hit the former council members as they stood waiting outside. They received a message from the new General Secretary of Siberia, Valery Sablin, summoning them to a meeting. The councilors stood in the cold for about half an hour before a truck stopped in front of them and the young General Secretary stepped out. This approach, or he approached the councilors and hand extended. Comrades, he began, but he was immediately cut off. We're not your comrades, status, one of the councilors retorted. Uh, Southern frowned. Each of the men before him looked at him in disdain and refused to shake his hand. He sighed and dropped his hand back to the side, continu continuing, I presume you know why I'm here, to... To dissolve our councils and state your own rule, to chase us off with some NKVD thugs? Quite the contrary, Comrade Salvin said, smiling slightly. I'm here to tell you your council is welcome to the continue the local governance of Kansk. And I'm sure you can see there's no NKVD thugs in that truck with me. Come, it's cold out here and we can continue this conversation inside. The councillors stood silently. Had they been too rash in presuming that Salvin was merely another presser? One of them opened the door to the council building and gestured for the general secretary to enter. Perhaps we can c become comrades after all, but I'll be right back. Alright, sorry about that, my friends, but let's continue with some more research. So, let's see, drop tanks. Ah, actually, we get even better drop tanks. I'd like to get more close air support. I think we're using tactical bombers, though, but let's get even better drop tanks, because we just did improve jet fighters, even though it's almost 1970 now. It actually wouldn't be bad. Let's get some more range, though. I like the range. The range is always pretty good to do. Ah, uh, beautiful. And also, off-screen, I did mess around with Germany just a little bit more. I made him go to war with Slovakia, because I think, you know, all they needed was political power, and they didn't have enough for some reason. So, I basically forced him to do that. I think it's okay to do, just because I want to see what Goring's Germany does. I've, I've never seen that happen before, so. I've never, I've yet to see him. This, this is the first time I've actually seen him win the Civil War, so. And honestly, they could probably easily take out Slovakia. Let's just be real. That's why I did it. Also, I made them go to, I might make them go to war with Den, well, not Denmark. Uh, Dietzland. Dietzland, uh, hopefully they do that, but we'll see what happens, obviously. And, Anyan, yeah? Where the heck is Anyanya? Oh, oh god, it's Sudan Battle Royale now, huh? Ah, uh, I love Sudan. Sudan is a very interesting country. Ah! Bratislava burns and with it the last bastion of a brighter future. There's no hope left for the people of Slovakia. Beautiful. So, I do know that with Goring, you have to keep attacking as fast as possible. Or so your government doesn't collapse and hate you, and the militarists could actually spawn another civil war. But now we have an open hand. We don't want Tan. October Revolution, we want food, love the workers, and keep us alive. The protesting workers held their signs held high in, in the Lenin Square of Novosibirsk, sharing anti sablonite slogans and demanding the shortages of food come to an end immediately. Squads of policemen stared down the workers, but that was to be expected. They concluded after years of despotism. What was not expected, however, was a large amount armored car that was pulled up to the city square. The protesters were dumbfounded as none other than Valerie Sablin walked out and ordered the police to stand down. Excuse me, comrades, shouted Sablin. I would like to speak with the leader of the protest. The workers led a man with a scar on his left cheek out of the way. We met Sablin near the center of the square. I heard this protest is over the recent shortages of food. I diverted some food shipments to the city, but in the meantime, is there anything else I can do for the city? New le leadership requires new experiences or expectations. A roof over every city, that's okay. Uh, let's help other power some more. Let's also uplift the proletariat. Well, some people think socialism is anti-industrial. Nonsense. Every social loves industry. It produces endless streams of affordable, uh, quality, high-tech goods. It organizes workers into vast armies of labor which gives, and gives them the means to make a living by whatever way they choose so. Uh, that's why we must provide more industry for the workers. Not only should every worker have a job in the factory, but they must have an available job in a variety of factories producing different goods. A vast industrial base is the way of the future, and it will liberate the impoverished masses of Central Siberia once and for all, in which we get universal health care, and it's going to hurt our budget quite a bit. But that's okay, as long as we're improving our poverty rate as well. Let's see. Uh, I'm tempted to even lower construction a little bit more, but for now, I think we're okay. I think we're definitely okay for that. And we're justifying... We're not justifying, but we're getting ready to go to war within a week, almost a week, so we can take these guys out, and then basically take these guys out as well, as I hopefully, hopefully we will watch what Germany will do in Europe, I guess, basically, so. Never enough GDP, never, ever enough. Oh, look, it went actually up by point, point 0.2, nice. With that focus, we took it, went up by point 0.2, not a lot, but that's not bad. Total expenditures, annual revenue, it is what it is, you know. Okay, so that's a light infantry division. It's probably like 10 or to 20 combat width, maybe. That's not bad. Peace conference is over. What's going on? Ah, uh, Egypt is killing itself. That's fine. 0.57 a day. That's not great, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's fine for now. And we've gone to war with them. And they have how many divisions? Oh, hold on. Oh, we go to war with the Russian People's Union? Oh, crap. I didn't realize that, too. Oh, I thought we would... Oh, crap. That is not... Oh, they, get... oh, they went to war with us. Oh, that is not good. I was really not expecting that, but same place, new job. Artyom Morozov had been working at a steel foundry in Zaya for several, seven years now. Under Vod's rule, he hated his job, he hated the long hours, he hated his low pay, and he hated nothing but he produced that was used to better the lives of his countrymen. 
but rather to enrich the fascist or press his opponents. He considered fleeing in times, leaving the foundry behind for a better life, but he knew that if that even if he wasn't caught, his wife and children would be undoubtedly suffer at either hands of the bods or thugs or the family's only source of income being severed. One might ask then why he stayed at the same job for all these long years. The bods had been disposed long ago. Was he not free to work wherever he pleased? Yet to Artyom, despite being the same factory under Salvin as it was under Oz Rodzewski. It was an entirely new job. His working hours were shorter, his pay was better, he had easy access to health care, and his labor was being put towards improving the city and producing steel girders for public housing. What's more, his wife was now able to work at the steel foundry alongside him, and the children would be cared for while they were at work. Our team had one side he'd never be happy at his job, but now he hasn't considered leaving. If we choose to work for the mankind, no burdens can bow down on us. I did not realize that they would go to war with us immediately. That was a bad idea of me. Um... Let's go with the tool in every hand. Just like, just having the tools and buildings isn't enough to make us an industrial power. We need more workers as well. There's really only one source of potential new members of the proletariat in Siberia. Peasants. We're not going to do anything harsh like seize their crops and force them to merge their plots for efficiency. But we're going to let them know about the greater benefits of urban life as well as some more gentle measures to get them to realize that the future of Russia is not found on a tiny plot, is not found on a tiny plot in the countryside. This is not good. This is really not good. They have so many divisions. I did not realize that they, this, that they were going to go to war with me immediately. So... That's actually really, really not good for us. So, uh, we gotta train some soldiers then. Because we have ooh, tiny military compared to these guys. Tiny, 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 tiny. How strong is that division? Oh, it's strong. Oh, it's not weak. If that's the case, uh, we're gonna have to do a fallback line maybe. You know what? Come back here. I want you to do this, this. This there, we're gonna do a fallback line. We're gonna seed some territory a little bit first. Uh, yeah, and do the best we. Oh, why the hell are you going that way? Yeah, go that way. There you go. All right, we could do that stuff. Just create opponents. If we lose a little bit, so be it. So be it. All I want to do is hold the line. This really, I'm really concerned about people's Russian, the Russian people's union first. Um, that looks really actually pretty tough. Uh, they're not moving in too much though. Can we actually instead just do one big old... Eh, we might be able to do that as well, maybe. They're looking not easy to take out, though. But why are they... Are they allies? They should be able to go to war with each other, if anything, actually. Address the uranium problem? Yeah, that's not good. Eh, you know what? As long as they can't win, don't even worry about it. You know what? Just kind of hold for now. Don't even attack them. Um, I guess if you can win, that's great, but... Mm, we'll see what happens. I mean, these guys are 40 combo with, so they're pretty good. Uh, oh, man, we're getting beaten. It's not out of us. It's not good. Oh, yeah, they're definitely trying to wallop us. That is not ideal. Oh, uh, but they're taking some serious losses. Look at that. They're taking some extreme losses. That is nice to see. Uh, oh, God. God. You know what? I might just make you guys 40 combat with this wall right now. Just so we have some more strength in the field immediately. Oh, that, I really was not expecting this. A tool every hand, though. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and do University and Diversity. Army professionalism. Upholding democracy. Party leaders are no longer just have the only say in Siberia's policy. It is time we allow the average person to weigh in. Every adult citizen will be granted the right to universal direct and secret ballot. They may then vote for the party or independent candidates. A non-party member with no criminal record can run as an independent candidate too if they have signatures of from 1% of the area they wish to represent. Seats will be then split proportionally between party members and independent candidates. In this way, the representatives of the people can still be at every table in Siberia. Oh, that's not ideal. This is really not ideal. Go ahead and kill that way. If we have to lose the city, so be it. Beat up their tank, which they, we can't pierce, but that's okay with me for right now. I'm really tempted to rush those soldiers out, just so we have enough of a line here. Oh yeah, even when they're attacking, they're still losing quite a bit of strength against us, which is kind of okay with me. Yeah, that was my bad, going to war. I did not realize these guys would go to war with us immediately. We've lost 4,000 versus 21,000. Nice. We could probably bleed them dry, probably. Better resource extraction? Good. How's our land doctrine? Did we finish this? We did not. Oh, we need to definitely get concurrent frontal assaults. It only takes a little bit more than two months, which is not bad, but mm, we're definitely going to be bleeding these guys dry, which is good for us, but still. You guys could probably win, especially with your support. Nice, look at that. They're getting very weak. The IFEs can't do very much about that. That's fine with me. No, don't lose, guys. Don't lose. There's not much we can really do about it, though. Fighter wings, do we have any extra planes? Not really. we got to keep those extra planes in reserve just in case if our guys need them. Oh, our guys are looking weak. But so are theirs, so that's good. 34,000, 39,000? God dang. That's going to be a slow retreat back. Slow retreat. Don't even worry about it. We have enough factories back in the other part of Siberia. That's okay with us for now. So how does it keep going up? Probably because we're spending more on our military. That's why. Duh. Duh, Mr. Mokalover. Duh. Take what you can. Um. 
And if, honestly, that doesn't matter to me right now. I don't really care about it. Terrorists attack in Italy, upholding democracy. Not bad. At dawn, it is not just night that dies. It is man and his becoming. And the warm blood staining the pavement is a word that is just starting. Cool. Adjust society. So we get more political power. Let's do this one. Liberation, not annihilation. We must clarify what the Red Army does to all of our recruits. It is a force of the revolution, yes, but it is not just a blunt instrument to beat anyone we don't like with. It is a professional force that will liberate mankind, not shoot other warlords or raid outlying villages. We are doing this for the people of the villages and towns we like. We take. We will not tolerate any hooliganism or harsh retaliatory methods in the areas we occupy. A Red Army soldier is a friend to the people of Russia, not just another conqueror. Yeah, as they attack me more and more, they, their strength is not doing that well. You might actually be able to win there, but probably not. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. That's okay. Uh, do we have any upgrades? That'd be very good to see. Anything? No. Guerrilla fighter. We only have two armies. Which isn't ideal, but you know, it is what it is. Losses. 14,000, which isn't bad. For 57, that's pretty good. Um, how much manpower do they have, though? They have so much manpower. So many divisions. Rush them out right now. I'm just going to throw you wherever you need to go. Just go, 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 go. Help them out. If you can, that'd be great. Destroy their strength. And we're holding out here pretty nicely. These guys are entrenched. And I put on signal companies for these guys too, right? Big boys? Yes, I did. So, not bad. Really not bad at all. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Kill your own army off. I love it, love it, love it. Make sure, though, they don't come in here, though. Tokyo standoff. Has the Empire of Japan gone mad? Probably. And that's okay with us. Help them out. Help them out. Shore up the line a little bit more so we have to defend all these new territories. Just defend that one. Good. So far, it seems like we're holding out relatively okay-ish. Not great, but not bad. Using 40 with combat, combat infantry is not a bad idea. Uh, this could probably ruin the stockpile of guns we have. Well, I got plenty of guns. Howitzers. Pretty much... Uh, I'm tempted to already switch you guys around. Big boys. We have everything available except anti-air, which is fine. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Can you help them out, maybe? Oh, that's not good. That is really not good. That is really not ideal. Liberation, not annihilation. And, oh, watchdog groups. Less attack, more war support, leader experience gain. Let's try that. So, war is hell, but that does not have to be unduly so. It is undeniable that our troops under our command have committed crimes against civilians in the past in ways that they have harmed relations between the people and their supposed protectors. This cannot be allowed to continue. We should set up civilian oversight panels, party watchdog groups, and independent judicial structures to combat the potential excesses produced by an ongoing war. It may hamper the effectiveness of our troops and draw some resources away from other uses, but it will be worth it. 87,000 losses, they only 74 divisions. It used to be 75. Oh, they're slowly beating us back, which is not good. I don't want to lose Novosibirsk. Really don't. Uh, lower this. Get rid of this. Move in. You know what? You could probably still beat these guys up, too, anyways. That's good. This way, we need less soldiers on this part of the front, which is awesome. Oh, you guys are getting beaten up. Um, honestly, even if we lose it, it's not that bad. So, go ahead and retreat for now. Better drop planes or drop tanks? Good. It is 1970, my friends. Happy New Year. Let's grab some more research speed real quick. Integrated circuit computing, great. God, I wish we could improve ourselves some more, though. I really wish we could. Oh, this is not good. Get down there so we can defend better. Still, really no upgrades? I mean, I thought we were fighting pretty darn harshly around here. Well, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3. That is the amount of strength that we have currently. Or the army experience level of the leaders. Yeah, words. Difficult, hard. Yes, hello. Well, I mean, if you really want to try to win, I mean, I guess you probably could, actually. Crush them. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, crush those guys. That is nice. That is really nice. They're still attacking, and for the most part, they can't win, which is good. We have to open a hole here, but you know what? If we can't cover it, that's okay with me. Nice. Even their tanks aren't doing that well. I I'm a little surprised we can actually hold out. Like, having 40 with combo with infantry is a great idea, but it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, the people march on. I want to get that. Just society. We might as well. Buryat, Yakut, Tuvan, Tartar. The vast expanses of eastern Russia are home to the myriad of indigenous peoples and ethnic minorities, many of which have now come under our purview. While the old policies of Russia's imperial expansion may have led to generations of oppression, we can do far better. The chauvinism of the past must end, and a truly equal union for all must rise. Well, we'll see what happens. This is definitely a new year for us. Definitely a new year. Holy cow. I just don't have people to spare. I really want to take this tile, but... 
I just don't have soldiers to spare. We're probably going to get defeated here, which really sucks, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I don't have enough divisions here. Hmm. What are you guys doing? Hurry up, move. Move, move, move. Actually, you could probably go here. And then you come here and do that. There you go. Maybe slowly expand into Kazakhstan. Yeah, I'll probably have to do that. Nice. Let them waste themselves on our line. Oh, that is not good. Kill these guys off. They're not going to win there. No, 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 no. Oh, we finally have an upgrade. Infantry expert, that'd be good. Um, Max entrenchment. We could probably use that for now. Yeah, let's go and get that one. And move a little faster if we can. That would actually probably be best. So this way, even on defense, we're very, 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 very good. It's offensive. Uh, go and get the attack for that guy then. Uh, that's it for now. That's fine. Logistics. Better logistics. That's nice. Get some more en entrenchment for now. Because we already have engineers on it, guys. I think that would be quite ideal to do. Losses. There have got to be at 189,000. Jesus, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Beat them up. Beat the snot out of them. Kazakhstan is really not that strong. Oh, we're fighting Orenburg. Is Why don't we fight? Oh, okay, well. The more the merrier, I guess. These guys are just fighting their hearts out. Jesus Christ, this is awesome. I was really worried we won't be able to stand up to these guys. And to a degree we can't, but to a degree we can. Where are you headed? I don't want to lose Novosibirsk. I was thinking about abandoning it, but let's not lose it for now. Oh, you're holding on. That's good. Any red anywhere? A just society? Great. The tyranny of none, the republic of all. Yes. So, in every democracy since the dawn of time, one of the most vital questions has always been that of the majority and minority rights. The majority must not be able to oppress a minority, but the mi minority must not be able to completely overrule the majority. As our union expands across Russia, we must ensure that the rights of all are fairly balanced in all aspects of governance. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Um, less consumer goods. Eh, less war support. I don't want to lower my war support for now. Yes, yeah, civilian spending is getting out of hand a little, to a degree. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yes, please. 40 combat with for the win. <clears throat> oh, we finished. We'll get more planning. They lost 200. They lost so many guys. Jesus. And we're now finally doing their land doctrine. What if we hurt our enemies more with more defense and breakthrough? Not a bad idea. I kind of want to go on the offensive, actually, now. Let's see what we can do about this, though. You help out. You should be able to crush them pretty easily. Yeah, there you go. We can't really uh, actually, you know, expand that much at all. Ooh, there's a division here. Beat up that division so that they don't, they don't have much strength. Oh, I even had military austerity at the same time? Jesus. Uh, cut spending then from here. Oh, that really kind of does help out. Now we have even more defense. I could actually boost the military budget by a little bit if I really wanted to. Okay, that's good enough. Ooh. Do that. It's not bad. Really not bad. One, two, and then a third one. That's fine for now. Beat them up. Just beat the snot out of them. Beat them up so they can't do anything. Beautiful. Oh, they're only light infantry versus 40 combo. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That is some nice stuff. Yeah, they can't do anything against us now. This is going a lot better than I thought. This is going a lot better. Holy cow. Uh, oh, yeah, it's adaptable. I love it. Nice. Four, five, four. Good. Getting more later XP gain is a good idea. They've lost 300,000 soldiers. 300,000. I kind of do want to try a general attack, but I know it probably won't go that well. I definitely want to attack here, but I need more soldiers, so... Go ahead. Just go into the line. I'm not going to raise up their levels yet, but the will of the people. Yevgeny Sokolov has never moved from the city of Magadan, and yet... But, yet had, by his count at least, been under five separate regimes. At 60 years of age, he had seen Tsars rise and fall, the Presidium be purged and purged again, and the Russian fascist party storm the Far East only be driven out again. But under none of these regimes had he seen a ballot, not once he had the opportunity to vote. When General Secretary Stalin's forces swept through the city of Magadan, he had no reason to expect a change in this pattern. And yet, after all those years, he, an ordinary citizen of Magadan, finally stood before a ballot. He has almost childlike excitement betrayed his long life as he cast his vote. No authorities watched over his shoulder, no one checked how he had voted, and no one threatened him in any way. He was, for the first time in his life, proud to be a free man. Democracy is indispensable to socialism. Uh, let's see, we don't want this side. I do want to come over here, but it costs more, and I don't want to do that yet. Yeah, it's good for research facilities and stuff, but meh. I don't know. Infrastructure. We already have a lot of infrastructure anyways. Freedom under socialism. 
How can a society founded on solidarity and comradeship exclude those who are not are the largest ethnic group? How can we fight for the freedom in the workplace and keep women at home? Moreover, if we free ourselves from the conservative rules and social regulations to keep working people down, what right do we have to restrict what consenting adults can do? What good is freedom if not shared by everyone? Socialism is liberation from all forms, and the Siberian Socialist Republic shall remember that. Interesting. Let's see. Anything here? No, we're good. We're still good. Yeah, they can't do anything. I love this. How much manpower do they have left? I should have created an intelligence agency, but... That's really not needed for this, for most of these Russian campaigns. Mmm, keep attacking me. They're just running out of men now at this point. Oh, they might actually do well here, though. What if I attack? Okay. They can win there, but I beat them back over here. I mean, they get so weak. Jesus Christ, that's awesome. This is why I upgrade my artillery and my guns and stuff like that. This is exactly why I do stuff like that. Uh, can you come in here? Yeah, you actually can. Good. Nice. Pavlodar? Well, get that soon enough. Nice. We're really gonna come that, there and beat him up that way. There you go. It's going a lot better than I thought, I swear, man. Woo! 40 combat width is the way to go. Almost 400,000 casualties. Better industrial equipment, the economy is doing great, and new reforms in industrial subsidizing has resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced qu quicker and cheaper. Or cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to the worker and manager like no more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwed in by imperfect hands. Industry continues her march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budget and a renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased support for much needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Rudimentary manufacturing lines, changes with factory complexes, great. Awesome, that's actually really good. Even more output now? Nice. Look at all the all the things that are going on here. I love it. Now, if I try to general attack, it might go well, but it might not go well. But you know what? I think we're going to save that for the next episode, because this video's gone long enough. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And tomorrow might be the last episode in this campaign. Thanks a lot for watching, though. And have a great rest of your day.